Hello guys, I'm back. Well, okay, so first of all, I'm so sorry the lighting is shit, but you're just gonna have to suck it up and deal with it, okay? I'm doing my best. Also, the video quality is terrible, and I think that's it for now. For now. Oh no, that isn't it. I actually, like, don't have all the books with me because I just do not have my shit together at all. And some of the books that I'm about to talk about are in a whole last different country, so yeah, you're gonna have to deal with that too. I'm sorry, I guess. <laughs> so today I'm here to talk to you about the books that I read while I was essentially on booktube sick leave. It, this may seem like a lot of books, Books, but keep in mind that this is like two years worth of reading. Most booktubers, you know, the, the nice aesthetic ones who actually have their crap together, they read this amount of books in like three weeks tops. So I am about to become the booktube clown when I publish this video, but that's fine. That is something I've already accepted a while ago, as if I wasn't already the booktube clown, you know? So the first one I read isn't even a book. Wow, it's a, it's a graphic novel, like a manga, actually. Before this one, I hadn't read a manga since I was like 12 and really into Naruto, you know? And this one, this, this particular one, this is Uzumaki by Jinji Ito. I loved it. This would have gotten me back into manga if I actually had the determination to read more. The illustrations were spectacular and just the story building was amazing, like various points of view, etc. I think my favorite part of this, not gonna lie, were actually the illustrations and how Jinja Ito really doesn't shy away from graphic drawings. I'm a very artsy person myself. I really like art. So this was a plus for me. Actually, I'm gonna show you. This is like kind of the layout. I feel like this is what kind of every manga looks like, right? But once you actually like really look at it, it's it's so nice. I, I just love the illustrations. Well, not nice because it is quite gory, but you get my point, right? The next book I read is an actual book, Um, kind of, it's a play. I had to read it for uni and it was A Midsummer Night's Dream. Yes, I did read A Midsummer Night's Dream in university. That's French education for you. The book that most people read when they're in primary school, I had to read for uni. I gave it four stars on Goodreads, purely based on enjoyment, because who the fuck am I to be rating Shakespeare? Like, come on, come on. Okay, look, I enjoyed it. I could appreciate it for what it is, but I am, I am not about to rate Shakespeare's quality of writing. Not at all. <laughs> four stars but that is just based on my reading experience of it. I actually did really enjoy it. So maybe it's a good thing that I did read it when I was a bit older because had I read it at 15, I'd be like, oh my god, I didn't like it. It was boring for me because I don't get it because I'm dumb, immature. Can I maybe get a rat review out of this? No, I actually really liked it. I tend to really like Shakespeare's comedies. I really liked Twelfth Night as well. It was another one that I had to read for school this time. The next book is also a university book. Can you tell that I wasn't reading really unless I was absolutely forced to do so? So, so this one is Glass Menagerie by Tennessee Williams. Holy shit, I loved this one so much, so, so much. It was real, it was easy to read, and I'm not usually into plays, so I feel like that says a lot, especially as for me, character building is so, so important. I'm always so impressed by playwrights like Tennessee Williams, Samuel Beckett, who actually managed to really grow and develop their characters through almost exclusively dialogue because they write plays. I know that for me, if a character feels like it's too fictional, I don't like it. Do you get what I mean? Do you get what I mean? Like sometimes a character can be well made and have some depth, but you are like, there is no way you would exist in real life. Just no way. And you know, they have all the kind of basis for a good character in terms of they have flaws, they have qualities, they have this, that and the other, but you just read about them and it's just like, you, I would never meet anyone like you in my life ever. What are you what are you doing? Obviously this didn't do that. I really liked it. I thought the characters were just so incredibly well fleshed out and you know, it it, it wasn't the most fastest most exciting plot ever, but the characters for me really carried this entire story. I know that, you know, for me and I'm guessing quite a lot of people as well have trouble keeping up with the book and as she's reading the whole thing if bland characters and a bland story. I feel like that's why a lot of people just tend to turn to young adult novels because plot is always fast, it's like badass characters. This isn't, I'm gonna stop there because this isn't the YA round 2.0. It's a very powerful play. I feel like Tennessee Williams really did a great job delving into the emotions of the characters, just human emotions in general, which really creates a proximity to the reader. And no, really, Highly, highly enjoyed it. Very much recommend. So the next one I read, I don't even fucking remember the name of the order because this is the next one I read. It was a university book. Uh, I don't even know 
how I had the audacity to log it into my Goodreads because I don't think I read more than three pages of it. But I thought I'd mention it if any of you are interested. Dance of Death. Do you know what? I didn't even buy the book. I read the first few pages for free online. I'll link it in the description, like on Goodreads, where you can read actual reviews for it. Next book I read was actually a book that I chose to read. Wow. It was Killing Commendatory by uh, Haruki Murakami. I love Murakami so much. I gave this book a four stars and I'm it's not quite clear in my head why I only gave this book four stars because in my mind I actually almost enjoyed it more than 1Q84 which is another Murakami book and one of my all-time favorite books and then I just gave this a four star. Honestly, honestly, I think that it's the French mentality seeping into my brain where it's like no nothing is perfect therefore we do not get the highest mark that's so silly why why would anyone get a 20 out of 20 or a 5 out of 5 stars because nothing is perfect i think i i honestly think that's what it is because the only thing that i tend to not like about murakami is that i feel like um he's never met a female human being in his life you know what i mean like if you read his books you must have noticed like how weird his female characters are like i get that it's his style of writing and i actually like quite enjoy it i find it quite amusing really but it's just have you have you have you met a girl sir and i feel like that's something we saw a lot less of in killing commendatory and i think i'm gonna have to reread it and probably change my rating i'm guessing that's what's gonna happen anyway the next book i read i didn't read all the way through but i think that i read enough to get a general idea and to log it as a good read because i read like three quarters of it maybe you'll get what i mean the innate by virgil because fucking hell okay listen and again another university book do you think i would choose to read that out of my own free will absolutely the fuck not i had to read like the odyssey the iliad and the aeneid and i mean look i sat through the fucking entire odyssey all right and i think that honestly what happened is when virgil fucking wrote the aeneid is the hey homer uh can i copy your homework and then homer goes oh yeah just like change up a few things so it's not obvious and then and uh, we got a new main character for the aeneid and and that's it <laughs> i i felt like i had read everything so i didn't finish it i i still passed my exam on it if it's good enough for my professor it's good enough for goodreads okay Nice, moving on. Next book that I read is Memoirs from the House of Dead by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Again, such a confusing rating for me. I love Dostoevsky. One of my favorite books is Crime and Punishment. I don't understand how I gave this book like two stars. I think it was probably, I think it was probably the wrong time for me to read it, to be honest. I was probably like kind of stressed out and like skim read a bit of it. And I feel like that's something you really have to get into. So I will give it another try, but I can't say I remember much of it. So can't have been very focused on it and I think I just put two stars on it because I was bored most of the time and called it a day honestly uh but yeah basically what it is is memoirs about being in a prison camp in Siberia which is usually my shit you know next book that I read was actually a reread I reread Winter Girls it's one of my favorite books um and we're moving on. <laughs> Next book that I grudgingly read was The History of Rome by Livy. Can you can you guess if this was for school or for my personal enjoyment? You are correct. It was absolutely for my university. Uh, this is also an ego read. Like, now I can tell people that I've read it. You know, this is not the book that I would typically pick up and be like, oh my god, I can't wait to read this. I'm going to enjoy it so much. I actually kind of was bored throughout the whole thing because, like, I'm not smart. Now I can tell people, oh yeah, and they're like, I read that. Given the choice, I probably wouldn't have read it. Next book is another university book. Holy shit. Wow. I really didn't want to read. Is The House of Bernard Alba. Um, this one is just weird. Like, it just tells the story of this matriarch with, like, her daughters and how they she controls, like, every aspect of their lives, from what I can recall. Because this was, like, a year and a half ago. I don't know. It was just strange to me. Like, I didn't dislike it. I didn't like it particularly but i didn't mind reading it if that makes sense so it's not like something i would usually reach for but given the fact that i had to read it could have been a lot worse so i think i gave that one like three stars or some shit next book i read was frankenstein by mary shelley i loved it i really did i liked it but i feel like it's impossible not to like it again i cannot rate this because no i am not i'm not going to rate a book 
by Mary fucking Shelley. I heard she wrote this in a night and then she was like 17, which like, okay, genius, fine. Make the rest of us look bad, why don't you? It's not like I failed at doing NaNoWriMo for the fifth year in a row. I just, yeah, Mary Shelley just makes me feel fucking insecure, so we're moving on. The next book I read was in French. I don't know if it's being translated into English. So the original title is Le Monde Selon Kim Jong-un. So I guess the translation would be The World According to Kim Jong-un. This book, I really hope that it has been translated into English so that you guys can read it because it was truly fantastic. It is obviously non-fiction, but as you may have picked up on, I have read my fair share of North Ralea collated books. Barbara, go home, you're drunk. I'm not actually drunk. I should change that home in a minute. So it is fantastic. I really liked it because honestly, even though I obviously do not agree with the North Korean regime, oh shit. I obviously do not agree with the North Korean dictatorship. And I think that, you know, they're just, their whole political system is fucked. She wrote it from such an objective point of view that at the beginning I was like, is she pro Kim dynasty because I was so used to reading defector stories just people trashing the fuck out of North Korea and being like incredibly biased and what she did was not be pro North Korea what she did was give us the facts describe North Korea exactly as she saw it without adding any sort of opinion to it and I thought that was amazing because as much as I disagree with it personally I do really admire the fact that you know she took a risk like not a lot of people would I think write about North Korea in such a non-biased, just normal way. So I, I thought it was great, honestly. And if it's being translated into English, I would highly recommend that you read it. Next book I read was also non-fiction. It was The Psychopath Test by John Ronson. I really enjoyed this one. I am very interested in psychology, as you guys may have picked up on as well, by the video that I made on true crime, which... I would like to make more of if you guys are interested. It was, it was just good. It was just like, good, you know? You finish a book and you're like, wow, I don't hate this. I actually quite like it. So I just, the writing is engaging. It's interesting. Like the amount of research that has been done, like shit, John Ronson did not half ass this crap. He went so deep. He got so much information together and then condensed it in a way that normal people like me can understand. So I thought that was amazing. I learned so much. It was interesting, just like super informative in general, really recommend it. I mean, it's quite well known, so you're probably not too surprised. Next, <laughs> next book I kind of read, I read like half of it and then I, I just like took a look at myself and I was like, Barbara, you are a clown. How to, <laughs> how to become a straight A student, look, I started reading it after, what's his name? Thomas Frank? I don't know, one of those like self-help productivity, like I'm perfect YouTubers. No hate him, I love his videos anyway. So he like recommended that and I was like, oh shit, this is interesting. Mind you, this was after watching like a million productivity tips videos and stuff like that. So I started reading it and basically it just tells you like the obvious crap of like time management, organization, take notes in class. When I got to the take notes when you go to class part, I was like, had I actually spent the time that I spent reading this shit and not learning anything of value, actually studying, I would be a straight A student by now because this is crap. This is the advice that is equivalent to, oh, you have bad skin? Have you thought about drinking water and eating your vegetables? Fucking hell, man. <laughs> I'm just, oh, I'm, I'm still a little bit salty. If you wanna become a straight A student, maybe d don't read this book spend the time studying instead. Ridiculous. Anyway, next book I read was Knife's Edge by Stephen West Abbey. I loved it. This is so interesting. This is also non-fiction, but it's like, okay, Stephen West Abbey talks about how he was a medical student and had a sports injury, had to get part of his brain fucking lobotomized. And he became a better heart surgeon after that because he started looking at things in a more objective type of way and realizing that being objective and not really developing an emotional attachment to your patients really helps in being a good doctor, which makes sense. But this dude, this dude fucking took it to another level. Holy shit, this motherfucker started drawing parallels like between psychopaths and surgeons which you know usually you don't think mm, people who save my life psychopaths 
one and the same. But it does make sense when you think of it because, you know, you do need to have an emotional detachment to do well because if you're like, you know, sweaty and paranoid and oh my God, what if I fuck this up? And you're probably not gonna do well. I wouldn't know, I'm not a heart surgeon. I'm just guessing that's how it works. I liked Stephen West Abbey, the psychopath so much. So I read his other book, Fragile Lives. This one is just, it's his CV pretty much. I'm making fun of him, but you know, you know that if I had achieved half as much as this man had. I would not write one book about it. I would capitalize on it by making an entire fucking series. I'm just jealous that he is a smart doctor and I'm just some dumb bimbo on YouTube. Anyway, so there you have it guys. These are the books that I read. Yeah, so that's about it. Thank you guys for watching and I shall see you guys soon. Bye.